Hi students, so this is part two to um, using Illustrator um, and Rhino together. So in the first part, we traced uh, the PDF that was provided to us by the library. In Illustrator, I use the pen tool, but you can trace it um, however you like. And now I have gone over to the other side of my computer so that I can use Rhino which looks like this, and it's actually called Rhinoceros. Um, and all you have to do is double click. These are some old files that have been opened, but it will automatically open a new one. And it's pretty basic. You've watched the, um, the sort of demos for it. So now I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step practical application of it. Um, one of the first things you need to do is change your units. Um, and I'm saying this because everyone might not have uh, it set up properly. Um, I, I typically work between both millimeters because I'm 3D printing a lot and then feet and inches because I'm modeling for architecture. So when I open Rhino, it's the first thing I do. So all you have to do, um, again, you have watched the tutorials. This is your command line. Uh, Rhino is heavily typing oriented. Um, it's really great because anything that you might imagine as a tool um, is like possibly already embedded in the software. So for example, when I was teaching some graphic design students in um, my last job, they asked if there was an align tool and I had never even used it. And lo and behold, there was an align tool very similar to um, Illustrator. So if you want to do a command, you can usually just type it and something will pop up. So for me, I'm going to look up units. So do you see how everything is starting to give me options? I'm gonna type units and hit enter. And then my document properties pulls me right up to my model units. And again, I was 3D printing yesterday, so now I'm going to switch back over to um, feet and inches. I would just stick to inches for now and hit okay and I would change the, dis the distance display, but that's also not totally pertinent. Just changing it to inches for the best. Okay, so now we're going to File, Import, the building outline I just did in Illustrator and it's asking you, uh, it's called a PDF import, whatever, it's not a PDF, but um, it's asking you about the units. So remember we were talking about the units in the PDF and in fact, there is no scale. So that's why we sort of highlighted where that door was so that later we can go back and um, put the door in. Um, into true scale. So right now it doesn't matter what our scale is because we didn't do it accurately. If you had, again, been doing something that was for 3D printing or um, something that was going to be laser cut, which we will cover later in the semester, then this could be a pertinent, um, a pertinent thing for you. You would want to make sure that you were in inches and importing in inches at the same time because the Rhino unit could be millimeters, it could be centimeters, it could be miles probably. So hit OK, and here we go. So it's exactly how I had left it. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, again, double clicking up in this corner to enlarge this window. And using my right mouse button to pan. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on um, the basics because you watch those three tutorials or those uh, Linda tutorials. Um, so this is exactly what I wanted. The next step is to scale this so it's three feet apart. 
So the easiest way I know how to do that is to take a line. So type line, hit enter. And draw a line straight up. So I'm going to turn ortho on. And just type. It's asking you for the end of the line. You can input a distance. So I'm going to put three feet right up here and hit enter and then hit enter again. Wait, no, one second. Line, three feet, enter, and then click, and there you go. So now what I want to do is scale these, this point to here and then this point up to here. So to do that, I'm going to turn on my snaps. And I'm actually not sure if your snaps are up. Um, I can't. I vaguely remember sometimes they are hidden. This is what O snaps are. Once you click on it, this will pop up. This is both helpful and dangerous because um, you will want to, it will try and click you to places that you don't want to go. I never use grid snap because I never work on a grid. I'm just not that kind of person. Um, you guys probably saw the gumball. I don't use it because I don't think it's precise enough, but feel free, whatever you're comfortable with is fine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all this and I'm going to move, enter. So again, I have my O snaps on, and for this one specifically, I must have end on. And you'll see, I'm going to be able to just snap right onto the end of this, and I can move it right to the end of this. So that's step one, move. Step two will be scale. So it's asking for the origin point. That would be this first point. And then it's asking for the first reference point or scale factor. If you were scaling something up 200%, you would type two and it would scale up by 200%. For us, we wanna scale the distance between these lines to three feet. So I'm going to click on this end and scale it up. Now, if I type distance, from here to here is three feet. So now I'm pretty sure for all intents and purposes, this is about the scale of winter set. So now that it's scaled properly, I'm gonna delete these lines. I don't need them because I didn't um, plan to put any doors in. But I'm gonna double click here again And this is in perspective mode. Now I'm just going to type extrude curve, grab my curve, and pull it up. You can do it in whatever view you feel comfortable in. But there are, again, some fundamental important things with certain commands. Extrude is important. You want it to be solid. And depending on what you're modeling for this, we do not want it to go in both sides. For example, for both sides, it extrudes out at the same rate on each side. Well, I don't really need that this time. And if I didn't do it solid, it wouldn't have what you would consider a cap. So it's kind of important to just um, check up here to make sure you can even be specific about the directions, but it's pretty um, flexible. So just be careful up here. If it's not doing what you wanted, control Z, try again, and look at these settings. So I'm just gonna guess that it was about 12 feet tall. Nah, probably taller, 14. And there you go. That's winter set. pretty bad version, but you know, whatever, it's start. You can change the way you see things by right-clicking on the perspective. Shaded is good. 
wireframe is also good. Rendering can get heavy, but people like it when it comes to materials. Okay, so this has been, um, so this is just basically the first steps to modeling. The next thing we will do is a similar sort of process, but figuring out the elevations and then working um, on applying those from Illustrator back into Rhino.